coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to next level 5 platformer tutorial. In this tutorial we're gonna be learning on how to do some tile um, yeah some tile motion, some tile movement. Now the the code is already done. I really tried to type and explain it, but there is a lot to explain. So I decided to already pre-make the code. Um, I'm sorry, I know you guys like when I type it out. I'm really sorry for this, but it is beneficial as I'll be able to explain every single thing and not have to split it up into two different videos. So, first and foremost, uh, if I go to tau.h, what I've added in is a new enum called motion, and it contains three properties, horizontal, vertical, and static. Okay? And what this means is that if you want your tiles to move horizontally, vertically, or if you want them to remain static, simple enough. Now, in our set content method, I've added a new parameter that is called motion, and it takes the motion enum. And in our private section, we have an instance of our motion enum. I created a new STD pair called uh, velocity. Uh, I have our direction, move speed, in uh, we have a range and a range counter so now in our tile.cpp in our set content we have this right here and what we do is we set our motion equal to the motion in the parameters right here I've set my move speed to 1 you can set it to whatever you like and you can load it from your text file if you like it's up to you and I, I set my direction variable to 1 and you'll see why I do this in just a second I set my range to 300 and range counted to, to 0. Now then again you can still set your range in your text file. The range is going to serve the same purpose as the enemy class. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to load it from a text file or not. I've decided not to just to um, get to the purpose of this tutorial. So anyways, um, in our update method what I've done is I said if motion is equal to a motion horizontal then we set velocity first equal to move speed times direction. Now this is where the direction variable uh, comes into play. If our move speed is set to 1 or whatever and our direction is set to 1, 1 times 1 is equal to 1. That means our velocity is going to be positive 1 which means we're going to move towards the right. Now if we change directions and we set direction to negative 1, then 1 times negative 1 is equal to negative 1 meaning our velocity is going to be set to a negative value, meaning we're going to be moving towards the left. So changing the direction from 1 to negative 1 will alter um, which direction it faces, and same for vertically. Now what we do is we're going to set our range counter, we're going to say range counter plus equals our velocity first and velocity second. The reason being is that only we, we're not going to have both type of movements, it's either horizontal or vertical, right? So one of these is going to be a, the, a value, one of them is going to be zero, one of them is going to be a different value. So it doesn't matter how, um, I just added both of them so I won't have to put them in an if statement. Like it would be annoying if I had to put like, um, if velocity is vertical then right down here I would say range counter plus equals velocity second, right? That would be, oh sorry, that would be annoying and pointless. It saves space and saves more time just adding both of them together since one of the values is going to be zero, it doesn't really matter anyways. So what I've used is the absolute value um, from the math.h class and I get the range counter. If it is greater than or equal to the range, then we set the range counter to zero and then we change the direction. We change the direction by multiplying it by negative one. So if the direction is set to one by default then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 and then if it's negative 1 then negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to 1 so keep on changing direction back and forth so what we do now is we set the tiles pos uh, sorry my voice cracked is we set the tiles position we add the velocity to the tiles position and we set the animations position equal to the tiles position so now um, about the player. So if the player is on top of the platform and the platform is moving, then we have to move the player on the platform as well. So if the player is not active and we're not moving the player, then we're going to set the position the position of the player. Um, we're going to add the velocity to the position and we're going to set the animation position to the player's position. The reason why we're doing it 
when it's not active is because if it is active, it doesn't matter whether we're on the platform or not. We don't need to move with the platform because we're moving ourselves. When we're not moving though, then we need to move with the platform. Okay? Um, and the reason being another thing is like, for example, if we're on the platform and the platform is moving left, right? And say I got rid of this, right? And say the platform is moving left, but we want to move right. What's going to happen is we're going to move right a couple of spaces. But if what, what if this is going to do is move us left a couple of spaces because the direction the platform is moving. We don't want that to happen, right? So that's why we say if the player is not active. So if the player is not active, then uh, we move it. If it is active, then we don't restrict this movement, okay? And also, if the player, if the platform was moving right and the player was moving right, what it would do is it would move the player based on the position, then it would add the speed um, towards this as well, and therefore the player would move faster than it normally does. So we just use this to equalize it to make it evenly matched, I guess. So now we have to go to our layer class. And what I've done is that I've added an else if, and if it's equal to motion, then I've created a, a std pair that called temp pair and a string that takes a motion type. Now I, I'm going to go to layer.h right now, and in layer.h I created a map that stores a std pair of ints and a string and I've called this motion. So in our layer.cpp, what I do is that I made a, a string called split1, and what this is gonna do is in our map file, we have something called motion. Now we set the tile that we want to move and what type of movement is gonna move, what type of movement is gonna make. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split it, we're gonna take these three values, right? Th these values right here, and we're going, yeah, we're going to take the substring and get these values. And then we're going to say temp pairs equal to set tile split one. So it's going to take that and the set tile function will handle everything for us. Then we take the motion type and we take it from the substring starting from value four. So what that's going to do is if I can find it, it's going to take it from here all the way here and it's going to read that and it's going to store it as a string. Right, and what we do is we add that to our motion uh, map, and like so. So, and when we actually start our layer, we need to be able to know which motion to add into our set content. So, what I've done now is I've created an instance of the motion, and I call the M. So, if we can find the tile, right? So, if we have a tile stored in our motion, then we're gonna check to see if that tile is declared horizontal. If it is declared horizontal, then we will set it to horizontal. If, it is, if it's not set to horizontal, we'll assume that it's a vertical. If there's nothing in there, then we're going to just say it is a static movement. And then we add M right there, so we've got our motion set. So now, right here, I've got my motion set for tiles to zero to the motion to be horizontal. So I'm going to run this program and they're all going to be moving at the same pace, the same range. And as you can see, uh, it is moving back and forth. So um, if I jump on the tile, I, my player moves with it, right? And if I'm moving, then I can move off of it. So basically that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, feel free to customize it however way you want it, but I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot from it. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask me in the description below or post a question on my forum. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and bye for now.